just don't see a team coming back from something like that. It's just, it's almost unheard of. Nearly getting himself killed. Equalizer comes down and takes him out. Mouse grabbing the kill. And they're just trying to make engage when they don't have the damage. It's not a warrior. Warp charm is much squishier. And there could be more. Mouse not afraid. They try to go back in. Clear love looking to grab the LT. But it's die boy who's got the damage. Slater drops again. And clear love takes him down. It's time to pull the trigger. They do so. They grab the turret. Now they can move back to the Mountain Drake. Then they can set up for Baron Vision. The path is clear for EDG. My reaction was my natural reaction as a fan, as a player, and as someone whose mind just got blown all over the wall behind me from the incredible comeback that we were seeing right there. He's coming. Gang looking to come in. Here comes your initiation. There he is. Oh, oh, oh my god. Your shockwave will find them all. Every Second Counts is presented by Cisco, powering the future of esports. At Worlds 2017, all eyes were on SK Telecom T1. The defending world champions had a lot to prove. After a narrow victory the year before and an uncharacteristic second place finish in the LCK 2017 Summer Finals, it seemed like cracks were beginning to form in the SKT dynasty. Fake is going to explode as the massive damage from Prey is going to say goodnight to the king of the mid lane. The Nexus falls and your new champions of the LCK. And I remember the like this the just the sentiment, right? Just like the the feeling in the air was that there was something on the horizon and it's like a, an air of change. And even even in SKT when they were dominating in spring it didn't feel like the same level of domination. SKT had a pretty difficult summer. Despite winning the Spring Finals and MSI, they limped into a disappointing fourth place finish in the summer split that followed. Many considered Faker to be the one player the team had holding them together. And going into Worlds, the doubts continued. It seemed like a safe bet that SKT were going to make it out of the group, but their main opponent was China's Edward Gaming. EDG have denied Uzi once again! EDG! They're onto the Nexus! Mako pushing them back, shoving Uzi away! But here's the Nexus! He's trying, but he can't do it! EDG, the most dominant team the region has ever created, will claim their fifth LPL title! EDG had just dominated the LPL summer split and playoffs and were looking like one of the best teams in the world. And these two teams had some history. While SKT was historically untouchable on the world stage, EDG was the only team that ever beat them in an international best of five, way back at MSI 2015. Here's the last engage. EDG doesn't even see the turrets. Eyes on SKT. SK Telecom T1 are wiped. The Nexus turrets are going down. LPL's Edward Gaming are the 2015 Mid-Season Invitational Champions. This is all to say that EDG knew how to beat SKT. They knew that SKT's greatest weakness was, in fact, their greatest player. And again, we're also looking at Clearlove. He needs to be active early on. He needs to be successful. He wants the first gank. Let's see if they can find it. Flashing the knockup. One to Faker. He's going to be taking low. Scout still looking to find the damage. One more auto attack. Might be able to do it. First blood for EDG. What a start. Iboy and Mako don't seem to be halting any sort of the aggro that we've seen earlier. Ardent sensors both up and running now for these supports. As mid lane, they call down the equalizer on to Faker. The burst is there. Who cares about the shockwave? And they're just trying to make engage when they don't have the damage. It's not a warrior war jar, but it's much squishier. And there could be more! Now it's not afraid. They try to go back in. Clear love looking to grab the LT, but it's die boy who's got the damage! Slater drops again! And clear love takes him down! Teams do this to him a lot. You'll see a team's whole plan just be, all right, keep this guy contained. Sometimes they're going to find the pressure. They're going to find those windows. And EDG had a crazy lead throughout the early and mid game in this game. Not even 30 minutes into the game, SKT were on the ropes. EDG collapsed onto Faker at every opportunity, setting the greatest player in the world back in the laning phase. Meanwhile, EDG were ahead by every other metric too. They had a 10,000 gold lead, seven towers to SKT's two, and two mountain drakes, 
SKT already lost their mid inhibitor and super minions pounded their nexus towers until one of them was barely left standing. And you just don't see a team coming back from something like that. It's just, it's almost unheard of, right? And it does happen, but in that particular game, that one, like EDG, like, like I said, like it was in the bag, 100% in the bag. Look at the base of SKT. It's being absolutely ravaged by these super minions. Nexus turret number one, almost already down. EDG continuing the pressure here in the bottom lane. Scout says, I don't care about the minions. I just want to put damage in this thing. SKT's options were narrowing by the second. EDG had a stranglehold on the game and they had their pick of how to win. Dragon was up, Baron was almost up, and another wave of super minions could easily be pushed up to SKT's base. Basically, things looked really bad for SKT. At least until EDG made one mistake. That was huge for them to actually get a bigger gold lead. They're saving the Drake round. They got two already. Bang is hiding. He's coming. Bang looking to come in. Here comes your initiation. The race. Oh, oh my God. Baker Shockwave will find them all. Like all great plays, this iconic moment in league history began long before the play itself was pulled off. EDG committed five members to sieging bot to take the inner bottom tower. But instead of letting them have it, SKT chose to fight over bot as long as possible denying EDG the opportunity to reset and ward Baron Pit. That choice set the stage for the most legendary ambush in League history. EDG got the tower, but with no vision on the top side of the map, they could only see SKT disappear into the bushes heading towards Baron Pit. EDG had to assume that SKT were doing the textbook play of setting up vision around Baron Pit in an attempt to hold off EDG or deny Baron. Again, let's look at the wider map here. SKT were on a ticking clock. If EDG took Baron, the game was over. By pushing the wave mid and then positioning for Baron, EDG were effectively putting SKT in checkmate. It's time to pull the trigger. They do so. They grab the turret. Now they can move back to the Mountain Drake. Then they can set up for Baron Vision. The path is clear for EDG. You can understand. You can understand from EDG's uh, perspective that they're like, well, I mean, uh, double sums and an immunity ultimate on our carry. What could go wrong? And they also have a 10,000 gold lead, right? Like, absolutely everything says that sh this should be completely fine. But, uh... For context, while it was a different patch, a team with EDG's lead at 15 minutes into the game during the 2017 summer split would have a 90.7% chance of victory, according to the Oracle's Elixir early game win probability calculator. There had to have been a conversation about, you know, we're about to lose, we gotta do a Hail Mary play. If you see me go, you go. That's what I figure it was. You see anybody else go, just dump the magazine on them. Just follow up, throw everything you've got and get in there. EDG made all the tactically correct, safe choices. SKT had two options. Either extend the game and hope for EDG to make a mistake later on, or go for a balls out Hail Mary play that would cost them the game if it failed. And SKT were not known for that kind of play. Unfortunately, EDG didn't realize that that's exactly what SKT wanted them to think. Bang, look at it come in. Here comes your initiation. The race. Oh, oh my God. Dr. Shockwave will find them all. SKT essentially tricked EDG into making the right choice and then demolished them for it. Let's break this down second by second. EDG walked mid to push the wave, thinking SKT went off to Ward Baron. Figuring they were safe, they walked just a little too far. They saw Faker and backed up. But by then, it was too late. Wolf snuck out of the brush, popped his ult for movement speed, flashed and activated Grand Entrance for an absolutely massive four-man knockup. At the same time, Huni flashed in with a feral scream to silence EDG's players. This meant that even when they came down from Wolf's grand entrance, Mako's Janna couldn't turn the team fight with her ultimate. And that's when Faker finished it off with the single most famous Orianna Shockwave of all time. Bang is hiding, he's coming! Bang looking to come in, here comes your initiation, the race! Oh my god! Faker Shockwave will find them all! 
I think if you don't have Booney immediately flash silencing afterwards, then there's like, remember there were five flashes on this team. Then they immediately flash out. You've just used your gap close to get in. And so you're then standing on an equalizer and dying. Like everyone's dead at that point. Like if you mess that up, it has to be that everyone is chain CC'd and then silenced and then shockwaved and then everyone's dead. Like that's the only, like actually just the only way. The play turned around the entire game. SKT went from having no hope of winning to near even contenders and in the end, the eventual winners. SKT, legends for a reason, find their win. SKT are the best team to ever play League of Legends and that man has been there for all of it. I couldn't see a way back, the stats couldn't see a way back, but one team fight initiated by Wolf, just like his famous Syra flashing at MSI. He went in on Rakan, the Bang was able to clean it up, and from there, you see the resigned looks on EG's faces. They've had one stolen from them. If everybody's not on the same page, if they aren't able to get that Wombo combo, if they don't win that fight, they just lose, right? Like, if, if SKT actually loses that fight where they engage on EDG, like, let's say EDG just all manages to frame perfect flash out of the way. I don't even remember if they had their flashes up or not, but we're just gonna get hypothetical here. And and they all evade it and they just turn around and kill them. EDG wins, like, like SKT's just done. That SKT had to get back into that game right there. Just look at all the resources available to EDG when Wolf goes in. EDG has all 10 summoner spells available and four alts. Mako died with flash and alt available. If Wolf missed, all those abilities would have come to bear on a defenseless SKT. EDG expected SKT to take the safe route, but in a split second, SKT decided to take the risk. They bet it all on Wolf. Why? Because you don't win games by playing safe. You win games by playing decisively, by making split second decisions that turn the tide, by looking at all the options in front of you and deciding to go out in a blaze of glory, win or lose. Sometimes you, d you wanna not lose, and that's never actually the way that League of Legends has ever been won, is by playing not to lose, right? The slow bleed out is something that Korea has been notorious for in the past, but it's not, if, if you're losing, you have to make the play. And um, SKT in that particular moment definitely did. As the years have gone on, the play has been recognized as one of the greatest in league history and many refer to it as Faker's Shockwave after Captain Flowers' iconic call. Kang looking to come in, here comes your initiation, the right three! Oh, oh my god! Faker's Shockwave will find them all! My reaction was my natural reaction as a fan, as a player, and as someone whose mind just got blown all over the wall behind me from the incredible comeback that we were seeing right there. But these days, many believe that the real linchpin behind the play working at all was Wolf. I have watched this back a hundred times to see if I was right or not, and to this day, I still believe I was right. Everybody has been in a game like this. And everybody that's been down 9,000 gold has seen a five-man Jarvan Cataclysm, has seen a massive Rakan engage, has seen a Mumu alt four people right in a big AoE zone. And they've all seen it not mean shit. As soon as Faker's Shockwave turned those health bars red and just, you saw, it wasn't just a nice CC engage, it was everybody just died. That's why Faker's Shockwave is the call. Each member of SKT was instrumental, activating their abilities at the perfect time to swing what should have been an unwinnable team fight. Because like, if you don't get that chain to land perfectly, and it's almost like in the end, like Faker's Shockwave was there as a celebration if you break it down to all of the nitty gritty, but knowing to hold, like this, this play had to have been planned and coordinated by the whole team, right? 
And like that level of coordination is just absolutely beautiful to watch. I love the fact that it still gets brought up all the time. I love the fact that it's a conversation and a controversy. I even love all the stupid anime avatars with three followers that see that say, cast was bad, cast are dumb, Wolf should have got credit. I love it because it's that big of a moment. SKT went on to fight all the way to the grand finals. They played two close series in the quarters and semis before getting destroyed 3-0 by Samsung Galaxy. The upset is complete as the kills come through. The SKT dynasty is over. All hail the new kings, Samsung Galaxy, your 2017 world champions. At the time, everyone considered it to be the end of an era the end of the SKT dynasty. What they didn't realize is that it actually ended with Faker's shockwave and Wolf's grand entrance. That impossible play, that incredible combination of macro strategy, perfect execution, and split-second decisive action, that was SKT's magic. After that miracle play, their performance was shakier. Two 3-2 wins and a 3-0 loss was not the SKT of old. No one realized it when they saw it happen, but Faker Shockwave was the last gasp of SKT's magic on the international stage. I think what makes competitive League of Legends so beautiful is the fact that it has to be all done in tandem. And when five players are on the same page to that level, that's, that's when the magic happens. And that's what makes um, that place so good. The place still stands as one of the most incredible moments in League history, and the players who made it happen remain legends in their own right, because they made the impossible possible. This is a game that you will always be able to use as an example when somebody brings up, yeah, it looks like this one's just about over here. X team has Y on the ropes, 10,000 gold leads stuck inside the base. You don't normally see these come back. Baker's shockwaves right there in the back of your head. It might be quiet, but it's there because everybody who saw that play knows that it's not impossible.